Okay, here we go. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Not For Nothing. I am back in Connecticut after last week's uh, visit to Rhode Island, and I would like to introduce uh, my next guest. Can you introduce yourself there? Yeah, I'm Timmy B. I work in uh, North Haven, Massachusetts at a shop called Night Owl. I'm branding very heavily. I'm branding. I was just saying, <laughs> you know, I have my hat too. I'm, I'm, I'm going all. I'm going all in. Uh, okay, okay, that's all right. Okay. So it's Timmy B from Night Owl in yeah. Massachusetts. So uh, let me ask you a quick question. This is something we kind of, I always kind of delve into. Some people know it, and I'm certain anybody's going to tune into this because of who you are. Probably knows the answer to this question, but give us a little brief history on like where you're from. Uh, you know, when you started tattooing, you know, like what year and stuff? Uh, I'm from Massachusetts originally, and I started tattooing in my basement in 2004. So it's been a pretty long time, but I, like, I got my first job at shops in uh, Western Mass at Mom's Tattoo in 2005, I believe, 2006. What, what town was that in? That's Mom's? in Amherst. Amherst, okay. Yep, yep. So UMass Amherst, is, all those college kids were just ready to rip. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. But after that, I, I moved all over the place. And I've, you know, I lived in Virginia, Florida, Nashville, New York. I think when I, dis when I found out who you were, you were in Nashville, I think, at the time. Yeah, I worked at Like, I had heard your name, but I didn't actually, I wasn't familiar with your work. That would have been in, like, mid-2000s, yeah? Like, late 2000s? That was... Like, 2008? That was, like, uh, after that. It was probably 2010 or 11. Oh, okay. It was not far down. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, because in 2008, I was in Virginia. And then I lived in Florida for a while, and then I moved to Nashville. Yeah, you really bounced the fuck around. I did, yeah. Now, what kind of, so did you strictly learn how to tattoo out of your basement, and then like, and then moved on from there and just picked up stuff as you went? No, no. I started in the tattoo party era. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> so in Massachusetts, <laughs> so, I, I yeah. was in New Hampshire, and I remember, because in Conne in New York, we never had that. Even, in, even when it was illegal in, in the five boroughs, people came to Long Island. They weren't. They met, see, they didn't call them tattoo parties. They were legal shops in, in, oh, yeah. in five boroughs. But in New Hampshire, when I moved there, it was still legal in mass. And everybody would do these tattoo parties. And you'd see the most atrocious shit. Yeah, that was... That was you? That, that was me, yeah. you, were, you were partially responsible? Well, that's a, <laughs> yeah, I totally was. I was like 17. And like I just... One of my buddies got a tattoo at a tattoo party. And I was like, I have to learn how to do this. I love it. And uh, so I met this guy... And he was in Palmer, Massachusetts. And I would go and I'd, I'd like make his line drawings for him and like just do his stencils and everything at these tattoo parties. And sometimes we'd get there at five or six in the morning so that people could go out and like fish afterward. Oh my so, God. So right. like, and we'd be there for like 13 to 14 hours a day. So, so it was like work, it was, you were like putting in a double shift in like a, for sure. like a Vegas shop. Yep. And I would just, whatever people wanted, if they wanted tribal or they wanted bunny ears or whatever the hell it was, like I would be there making all the line drawings, making the stencils. And then eventually he taught me how to tattoo. So I would, and then he would have to just mysteriously leave sometimes. So I would just be this like 17 year old kid in a house full of 30 people just doing tribal armbands and just doing whatever. I had no idea what I was doing. Do you have any photos of this time? Oh man, I might, fucking I might have some at like my parents' house, but once what really stopped me from doing it is I went to a shop in Palmer and they had a sign on the door that said, do not get tattooed by this man. And that was my mentor. Oh, and I was shit. just like, whoa, well, I've been tattooing with this guy doing tattoo parties. And they're like, are you fucking kidding What's me? What's your name? We're going to add your name to the sign. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like, no he, he was actually really nice about it. And he's like, get away from that guy. And his quote was like, would you get surgery in your kitchen? Like, this is a medical thing. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, I don't know. Well, it's, and, it's funny. That thought is the, the, way, the way you just said that. That's coming up again now in social media. How people are just like, would you get brain surgery from some fucking dude that know what he's doing? So that's ridiculous. But, like, but at the tattoo parties, it was a long time ago when people were still making their own needles and everything. Exactly. So I used to sit at his kitchen table after the tattoo party with a candle and I would hold the solder part of the needle so all the needles would fall into the wax and yeah. they wouldn't hit the floor so that the needle bar could be sterilized yeah. and then we could make more. But we he also didn't have an autoclave, so oh, we would, we so would we just put them in a toaster oven so the Defend package still, like, remember the Defend? Yeah, but the, the fucked up thing was you had to keep it at a certain temperature otherwise the fucking solder would melt again. Uh, yeah, oh yeah. So, but, like, the toaster was perfect because you could just show the client, like, yeah, see, the Defend thing is brown. It yeah, used exactly. to be green. Nailed it. But, yeah, people were like, yep, <laughs> sounds great. 
So, well, I mean, dude, back in the day, they used to boil the bars and then redo the and make their needles again if they. I mean, when I got in, we we had just started buying needles, so it was like mm-hmm. you know, you never. I mean, I, I shouldn't say it, the first year and a half, I I tattooed. I think we reused our maybe two years. We reused our needles. The first shop I worked in. I never knew what a loop was, and I remember tattooing and having the hardest time. I was maybe tattooing three months, four months, and I'm I'm fucking trying to get this fucking ink in this. Nothing is happening. <laughs> Just blood. Exactly. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, the, you know, the guy who's teaching me is not it's not there. One of the other guys, Tom Butler's there, and he goes, "Did you loop it?" I'm like, "Loop what? What the fuck's a loop?" You know, we're talking like a fucking eye loop. And he goes into his cabinet and he hands me an eye loop. I still have that eye loop till this fucking day. Really? Bang the fuck up. It's twenty, it's almost thirty two years old. Because I don't know how long he had it. But it's this banged up eye loop, and I op- I pull the needles out. And I look at. It, I'm like, and it was like this. It yeah. was like it was yeah. like a fucking angry claw. And I'm like, oh my god, yeah, it looks what like the an eagle's fuck? Fuck. And It's like Jesus Christ, what am Dude, I doing? This bitch? After finishing that tattoo, we went back in. We pulled all the needles out of this suit that we had. It's like hepatitis broth, and literally just I know that life too. Yeah. Flipped through and looked at all these needles. Dude, I threw out more than three quarters of those fucking needles when the oh, owner came yeah. in. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, dude, do you know what this is? Like an eye loop. He's like, oh. And he's just like. I love he, the I idea like, nobody knew what a magnifying glass was. How crazy. Was like, how, how did you kill ants when you were a kid? I, I was never <laughs> I was thing. never told like needles needles get dinged up. Oh, yeah, no, I never knew that either. Exactly. Yeah, right? Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, to this day, I mean, you didn't, Adam never had an eye loop until recently. I made him take, I made him take one of the ones I bought. <laughs> um, but, I, but again, looking at, he looked at them and he was a. All right, well, we still clean the rest of those and fucking be sterilized. But, so, literally, I mean, yeah. there's like two years worth of needles. That well, that's just that's the craziest shit, too, where I used to have to like scrub the needles and stuff like barehanded because we needed to save gloves and like yeah. do all that shit. It's just like at the time, you know, I'm like, people were like, oh, how did you not know that was bad? I'm like, I was fucking 17 working in some guy's kitchen. Of course, I don't know. In, the, in, yeah, in the early 2000s. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's like, like, come on. Like, it's it was, like the wild It's only wild been legal in Massachusetts till from 2001. Yeah. I started three years later. There wasn't much to go off of. Yeah, like, exactly. And that's true. The kitchen the kitchen parties never really stopped. I mean, oh, no, they because still, people they still didn't want to yeah, because people didn't want to pay a, a premium at a shop that now has to have an overhead and everything mm-hmm. else. And yeah. you did have a lot of those, those kitchen magicians opening up their own shop. For sure. You know? I mean, I'm happy that it happened because it got my foot in the door and I had a, I mean, what you could call a portfolio to like, when I went to the first shop to be like, Hey, I know I'm 18, but I've done these tattoos. Can you like fucking help? Yeah, like exactly. I, I want to do it right. I just, I can't yet, you know? Right. So, so I mean, did you have like a style back then or were you just pretty much oh, just God, eating no. what you saw? No, I mean, my nickname, you know, when tattoo names were cool. Yeah. I was tribal Tim. <laughs> tribal Tim. Yeah, so, like, so tribal was your game. So tribal, I loved it. I loved doing it because it was just like, I don't know, like you can make a line as clean as possible, which obviously was not the case. In my, but like, I loved tribal. I loved the way it looked. I, like looked originally, I wanted the whole sleeve of tribal. Like, I thought it was just the coolest shit. Like, dude, when fucking Dust of Dawn came out with fucking George Clooney with that tattoo on his neck, I couldn't wait to get my neck tattoo. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. I always wanted that. <laughs> But uh, my, my thing was, there's a guitarist from In Flames named Bjorn, and he had these like crazy black stripes. He still does. And I was like, I want that. And I want to learn how to do that, because I want to tattoo that guy. And this is 17, 16, 17 years old. Yes. That's yeah. fucking killer. See, I, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, super that's, cool. that's fantastic. Well, I used to draw on people, like, my real origin is, like, I used to draw on people with gel pens ever since I was 10. So, like, girls would go to dance recitals and ask me to, like, draw a fairy on their back, or, like, so they'd be on stage and, like, feel cool. So I did like body art like that with gel pens all through high school. I used to sleeve my arm every day. That's had a killer. designated toothbrush to like clean it off every night. And so you like, could start over again yep, the next day. Yep. And then eventually I would like kind of hide answers to tests and stuff. You know? So <laughs> nice. that, that kind of helped going me. On, right? <laughs> no, they you graduated. Are, well, I was a straight A student in like National Honor Society. So like all my teachers were like, you can draw on yourself as long as you keep your grades up. Because I wouldn't pay attention in class, I would just draw all this shit. I'd go in the bathroom to do my elbow. Like, I loved it. That's right. so that's all, all through high school, I had to fucking sleep. Every it's day. funny because so far I don't think I've met anybody. I've not done this yet with anybody, and I know a lot of people that they were born to do this, and they've always wanted to do it. But it's the first time I've had somebody that I've talked to here that where I literally came into this like, no, nah, this is what I'm going to do. Like this is it. Yeah, I like from from the moment my friend got his tattoo from that kitchen magician, I was just like. That's what I want. Like, that's what I want to do. 
So let me ask you a question. Like, where were you getting your gear from back then? Like, I mean, because back then you'd have to go into the back of a magazine. Although I think no, Papillon no. was Papillon and Enfield. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and that's when they sold, like, there weren't boxes of needles yet. No, you These are buy five needles unsterilized in straws yeah. for 20 bucks. So you're only getting five needles, so you got to make them count. And then that's when I would put them in the toaster oven and <laughs> sterilize them. And uh, that's what I would tattoo in my basement with. But Papillons, they were always so nice. And like when, when they came out with a new ink, they'd be like, hey, just try this one out. And like, you know, they were really nice. So they were actually, yeah. But, well, because yeah. at that time, I mean, it was such a, a supply company. really wasn't a big, especially one you could walk into. Like I know S&W had started theirs when they moved out to, to, to Long Island. And you could buy stuff directly or you can buy stuff through mail. Or yeah. you can go there directly and buy it directly from them. Yeah, I always went directly, and they didn't have a storefront. You went, you know, I'm sure you remember. It was, I, you just walk up to a counter. Yeah, and they had like the grandmother in the basement making needles. Yeah, and Tom <laughs> was part of it. Yeah, strong. yeah, he was mixing pigments and all kinds of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So it was just like this is this is strange, but uh, they yeah. So that's where I got like everything way before like, Tommy's supply branched out. It was, right. Like, it was like in that black awning that didn't. It only had like a number. I think it's like one eighteen or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. And you yeah. walk. I only. I only it, went. But there was no sign. You we, had to like know where it was. So yeah, we used to buy thing. stuff from Papillon when I was on the island back in '93. So we would get we would get mail order from them, and then it wasn't until I moved up here that I actually physically went to Papillon once with I think Eric, and I was it was like literally it's a little it's a little like eight by eight by eight room yeah, that you yeah. walk like an entranceway. Yeah. And and they they half door. Yeah, they have the half door, like a little black half door, and you just tell them what you need. Yeah, I only yeah. ever did that once. I only ever. I, only I, ever I was there every week. Image. I was there all the time. Oh, I would imagine. I mean, even with Pulse, like I mean, literally once a week, two, sometimes twice a week, people go in there. When we had the supply company here out of the shop, we'd have some local shops. Like literally every other, every three, four days, they were coming in. I need this. I need that. And we were selling stuff, and you know, we weren't selling single needles, obviously. So, oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, that was like, uh, you know, back in the day, Unimax, uh, back in 93, Unimax was one of the first companies that we knew of that was making sterilized. Like, you got it sterile. If you bought from National, uh, National, if you bought from Demographics, yeah. you bought oh, stuff wow. dipped in, it had a little rubber thing that you'd have to peel off and yeah. sterilize it yourself. Yeah, yep. And I love, Papillons didn't even have that. They were just needles in a plastic bag in a straw. That's and, funny. And, and I remember, like, when they came out, like, the, the guy who I worked, like, first started with he's like dude they make boxes of 50 needles that are sterile but you need a shop license to get them and i'm like how do we do that that sounds awesome and they're the same price it was like 20 bucks for a box and then at papillons it's 20 bucks for five needles yeah so exactly. i'm just like dude i'm i'm working at a bakery right now like can we try to get boxes of needles yeah, instead exactly. yeah, <laughs> like, i don't have time for this shit yeah like know? this is a lot of work and i don't get to do the and i'm not like charging anybody you know but so how long did you, like, how did you get into a shop in Massachusetts then before you fucked off to? I start yeah, because, well, I actually had to start in New Hampshire. Because, like, it was Mom's Tattoo, so there, they had two shops. They had one in Keene, they had one in Amherst. Okay, which was before so, it was legal. So, he, or no, no, this is, this is after. This is, like, 2000, oh, they opened this up like 2005 or, yeah. Or, like, Keene, no, Keene was first, sorry. I thought you meant, like, where I went. Oh, no, no, uh, but I'm saying they had the shop in Keene before, and while it was really, really Yes, and then yes, they just moved and then they, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that seems to be how everybody did it. They just they just worked over the border because I was in, C my wife worked in Seabrook. Actually, so did I. I was, we had Corey and I opened that little shop in Seabrook. I used to have to work in Salisbury. Okay, yeah. So yeah. it was right there. Right there, right on the side. So that's yeah. after I worked at Mom's. But yeah, it was part of, it was a shop called Whole Shot and like I had to, like, it was mandatory every year to like go there for a week during the summer to like keep that shop open. And it was, that was crazy. Nice. But with moms, it was like, I, I pretty much went to Amherst and they're like, no, we're not hiring. And then I like called the shop in New Hampshire and he's like, we're always hiring. Yeah. So like, I, there's always time here. So, so I drove up there and did the interview, showed him what I had done like, already. And he's like, all right, cool. Like, so if you want an apprenticeship, it's a thousand bucks. And if you, but it, you also have to sign a five year contract. Oh, shit. Okay. So, I was in the contract days, which a lot of people don't remember either. Yeah. <laughs> well, so the contract thing, it's it's funny because when I started, he started contracts maybe a year after. Because when I left, Siv had left also, and then he had a couple other guys bounce out. So, I think that's when the contract things, it was probably early 90s, like mid, like 94. 
Yeah, and my, where the contract thing started. Yeah. And then, I'm just saying, like, new tattooers would have no idea what the fuck that is. Well, I don't know. I think that, no. Does that, I, does that, does I, that, does that still that, happen? I've actually talked to a couple of people that have had to sign contracts. And if they do, they have to fucking leave the state. But, I mean, there were, there were so many people that fought that. Even back in the day, they were just like, I think a judge had said, you can't, you can't make, you can't not allow somebody to make a living based off of the contract in which they signed. But I don't know how true any of that was. I don't know. But because my, my old boss, the contract. guy who made me sign it, was a judge. Oh, so if anybody would know. <laughs> so yeah. he, like, he, his, and uh, actually, um, like, Jesse Ricks also worked for the same guy. Oh, okay. And, like, so we started at the same shop just at different times, and he had to sign the same contract. Oh. And, like, so the only lucky thing for me was, like, I worked in Keene, and I was going to college and, like, driving back and forth. I was, like, just constantly gone. And then I finally got the job in Amherst, so I could, because I lived in Belchertown, which is, like, 20 minutes away. Right. So I was, like, working in Amherst is, like, you know, better for me. Here, yeah. Uh, but and you're going to school at the same time. Yeah. yeah. In Amherst or? Uh, no, I was going in, in Holyoke. I was going to just a community college, but I knew I wasn't going to stay. I went for a semester and just dropped out. Oh, okay. Because my mom wanted me to go. It was one of those. And yeah. I was like, I was like, I'm already tattooing and I'm working at, like, I was working in the meat department in Atkins. Like, so I'm like, like at this grocery store. And I'm like, I already know tattooing is going to be what I want to do. And if so, you're making money, it's kind of hard to tell. Like, you can't, your mom's not going to be able to say, it's like, no, that's not going to work out for you. You need to, you need to have a backup. Yeah. Well, it's just, it was just so scary because Massachusetts doesn't legalize tattooing per state. Like, or like, like every other state. It's town right. to town. Right. Not even county. Yeah. So like, tattooing is still illegal in Belchertown where I live. Like, there's one shop that opened and they kicked them out and now it's illegal again. It's similar in Connecticut, dude. Really? Like, so every, every place is different. Every city, every single town has a different set of regulations, different health department. New Haven, obviously, has got mostly, uh, you know, the health department's based out of here. But like, New Haven itself doesn't really have much in the way of health, health regulations. But you go, to, like, now and then you go to North Haven, North Haven, it's illegal. So you have all the shops opening up in, in the next town over, which is Wallingford, which is, you know, cheaper rent and everything else. Wow. But I tried to get into New ha- uh, North Haven a while ago, and when I went into town hall, they're like, yeah, it's, you can't open here. It's illegal. And I'm like, I'm pretty certain I get around that, but I don't really want to fight <laughs> like, this. I don't feel like doing that. And yeah, you, not, think, not, you had to do that with Salem, didn't you? Like, I tried, So we did, yeah. yeah Salem, so like and I've told the story before where yeah. I had to go before a, a, a committee, like a, yeah. a, um, a public hearing, and it was a fucking shit show. Yeah, I had my they, like they thought you were like a drug addict or something. Yeah, right? so they straight that, up called yeah, me yeah. a drug dealer and all, <laughs> yeah, and all yeah. of our clients were drug addicts. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah a bunch yeah. of backward fuck talks. <laughs> and, and the best part is you go to Salem now and it is... And you're meeting in front of a warlock. And <laughs> exactly. It is the polar opposite of what it was back then. Ten years later and yeah. it's literally like a different fucking city. Yeah. From what I understand it's still pretty difficult to have a business there. Oh, but, sure, yeah. uh, but for the most part they've, they've gotten really fucking liberal. They, I mean... How would you not embrace that? I mean, it's it's ignorant, it's, you know? it's in your blood at that point. Exactly. Like there, when your <laughs> reputation, when you they've made movies of Salem and burning of witches. You know, just, yeah, just yeah. own it, dude. Yeah. Just own when, it. when the fucking high court is a warlock and a witch, you're just like, all right, many things are a little different. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, so how far into your career did you start traveling, and what was the point of the traveling? Was it because you just wanted to get the fuck out of Mass, and you had friends elsewhere? Like, what was it? Doing? Um, I, it, one of my friends was going through a divorce and like heard about this shop in Virginia that like had a, a lot of busy traffic and all this stuff. So I was just like, yeah, fuck it. And he was, they were going through like a hard financial time as well. So I'm like, fuck it. I'll move with you and like, I'll get us an apartment. Like, why not? Okay. Like, I'll just do it. I don't, you had no, you had there's no nothing like, like keeping me here. You know, yeah, you it was just no like, ties. but I also didn't know that like traveling to tattoo would be anything. You know, it, it was never like that. But then when I got down there, I, we worked for a guy and like I just started getting more recognition on MySpace and Ink Nation. Do you remember that? Yeah, oh, dude. So okay. I've had people be like, dude, you got to bring Ink Nation back. I'm like, <laughs> I ain't got it. People are like, no fucking way. The amount of moderators and like the, like, the amount oh, of critiques and, and everybody's so butthurt all the time. Dude, the like, best is <laughs> someone will come out and be like, can you give me a critique? And then you give them the critique and they'd be like, oh, fuck you, shit, man. What the fuck do you exactly. know? And then That's, everybody else would jump on it. Yeah, so, yeah, yep. Yeah. So I, I had good luck, but like, I think there was like, like tattoo bear or some some other kind of site too, so I just started getting traction there, and then um, like I did guest spots with Taylor Court since I was pretty oh, close. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah. like I him and I did my first real convention was um, in Dallas, and I went with Taylor Court, and uh, like so I got to meet him, and then like that's what like and then Russ hit me up too. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, So yeah. like, well, like, so because of the traction I had from these weird social media sites that I didn't think were anything, you know, yeah. I'm just doing 
I'm working at street shops just doing walk-ins and like tattooing cool stuff that I think is cool for free right. and posting that stuff. But then it was like, yeah, like Taylor asked me to guest spot and then Russ asked me to guest spot and like Russ definitely helped me a ton. And that would have been what what, what time, what, what year would that have This been? is probably 2009. Yeah. So this is right before you kind of broke then. Yeah. Like, yeah. Really. So that's, that was like the start of it all. And like that's, and I met, you know, like I knew Mike Chambers through all these websites. Right. So like my first show, I forgot my business cards, my banner, my machines. I like, I was nervous. I left everything at Taylor's house. Only brought, like, the bare minimum because I totally left a whole bag there. Nice. But I, I went up to Mike, and he, like, I was just like, dude, I know we don't know each other, but I really, do you have any machines I can borrow? And he let me borrow, like, three machines for the whole weekend. Uh, sure. And, like, everybody was so nice. I met, uh, like, Sean Herman, which is the sweetest dude, dude. all fucking time. And, and, and we have to bring him up. Well, I, I was going to say, <laughs> so when I met Sean, he was working for The Nightmare, uh, which, you know, Brandon Bond. Oh yeah, I, I yeah. Think that's kind of. I think that's yeah. kind of what I meant. Well, yeah, yeah, him and, and Josh Woods and all the. Yeah, other, well, all the other, like, so many people came out of that shop. And Brian Reynolds. Uh, yeah, you know, all these amazing people blew my fucking mind. Yeah, and that so, shop is a power shop. Like that for, was for a time, considering the fucking nightmare that was running. It, you know what I mean? Because yeah, I mean, I met him in ninety. I met him in uh, in two thousand when I first moved to New Hampshire. He came up to get tattooed for two consecutive days on his forearm. Really? Yeah, we did. We did this. We did like a. I think it was a three quarters from here to here. In two days, and the day I met him, he was just such a fucking loudmouth nightmare of a human being. I'm like, here's the deal. Probably had like 14 guns on him. Uh, and... This was he had to fly to get there, so no. <laughs> but it was one of those things. I Probably had to shipped up. Well, I had to, I had to sit him down. But like, here's the deal. Um, you be polite while you're in my chair. You don't act out, and we'll get along sparkly. Yeah. And it and that was like that set the bar for him. He never once spoke out. He never got. He was never. He was. Uber polite in front of me. Probably Dude, I used to get put in his place. No, well, I think part of that whole thing, and then I would see him across the room, and he'd be a fucking total retard. And then I'd walk up there, and he'd be like, "Hey man, what's going on? What's happening?" I'd be like, "I fucking hurt." And Where exactly, you exactly. And I couldn't call him on it because he never did it in front of me. So I just walk away. It wasn't until years later I'm like, "Here, do me a favor, go drop dead. I can't have yeah, this. I don't a, want this in my fucking life." His reputation's a little. Oh yeah! Oh, he had a big thing just happen too. I wonder how it's if it's gonna stick. No one him, it probably won't. Fucking nightmare. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, uh, so let me ask you a question, like Brent. Let's let's talk about Sean. Like, so you meet Sean at all or nothing, or while he was still working? No, I met him at a show, um, and he just came up to me and was just like the sweetest dude. And then we just got along. Like, perfectly. And then I went out to Alabama just to, like, say hi and hang out with him right. for a while. And he's the one who actually got me the job at Black 13. Oh, shit. So, yeah, because he was friends with Josh and everything. Oh, yeah. Him. And Doy. He, yeah. like, so Doy is the owner of Black 13 now. And he and Sean were supposed to own it together. And Sean's like, I don't want to do that. But my friend Josh, like, you should link up with him. Yeah. So Doy's the one who introduced Josh to Sean. Like, sure. like, like for, like, owner-wise. Or, yeah. Like, and, um... So then I was talking about like my dream with the buddy I moved to Virginia with. He was always saying like Black 13 is the shop. Like that's the goal. It, it that's really, the dream to really go was. work there. Yeah. And I was just like, fuck yeah. Like those guys are all awesome. And like, I would love to work there. And then, yeah. So I, like I didn't apply or anything. It was just one of those, they reached out and they're like, Hey, uh, if you ever want to move to Nashville, we'd love to have you. Well, this is like and I was living in Florida at the time. And I'm like, uh, this is, the, yeah. this is like the early point of like social media. Magazines were a big thing back in the day. So yep. if you got into magazines on the regular and you kind of were. Yeah, I was, you know I was I mean? very fortunate in that where I was doing so many shows and I was, I was too young to rent a car. So this is all the time I was driving across the country, like doing conventions and charging somebody 50 bucks a day and then like partying all night with people and then saying, eh, I just got to go back to my room. I'm getting tired. I'd sleep in my car in the parking lot because I couldn't afford a room. Because I just wanted to do tattoos that I could enter because right. then the magazines took pictures and then you get in a magazine because of a show and then that's how you get your name out. It was so one I, of those things like it, back in the day, like everybody tried to get picture, tried to get on stage and, and win the awards. Mm -hmm. I, I got a, I got a real sour taste in my mouth really early on. It, it, like when I started making a name for myself and then going out to conventions like constantly, like once a month, you know, every other month, whatever. Getting in the magazines or getting into the contests, a lot of times I knew I only won because the person recognized my work and they, oh, you should have won. That's not, so I stopped entering the, the contest. It's yeah. probably in 90, 
97. Which is kind of a cool thing. Like, you were already so big that everyone knew your work. Oh, but again, it was a smaller <laughs> so world. It was a much, much smaller yeah, world. Yeah. And again, we, we, like me and a bunch of other people, like Eric Merrill, like, I mean, you, we changed things so fast because you got it in the magazines, you got it in the magazines regular, everybody saw it. It wasn't like this crazy influx of social media stuff that you could Oh, yeah, had. for sure. Magazines right. are all you had. Yeah, back then, yeah. three or four people could really, really change everything. Where now it's like, well, now it's overwhelmed. For sure. But I mean, I remember, yeah, when I first started, it was like you and Tony. And like, I remember, I, I used to love doing realism. And then I saw a Nico piece. And I'm like, well, I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> somebody's doing it better. Yeah, like, I, I quit on that shit. And yeah. I like to draw anyway. So this is my excuse. But, but I mean, yeah, you were, I mean, obviously you're the legend. Like, where everybody knows you. I was just being old. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true. It's like. It's at this point, it really is just that people know who you are because of how long you've been in the game, and the fact like you you paid attention to things, you came up in that time where you did admire the people who came before. Now I think that that's you know I made a comment on 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 John's podcast uh, last week about having gone into a shop and nobody knew who I, who I was, and I know that sounds conceited as fuck, and it was not meant to be that way. <laughs> it was meant to be like if you come into my shop. I'd like to think myself and maybe a handful of my other guys are going to recognize me. If they don't, I would be upset by that. Yeah. No, and I the totally same thing, if somebody that. comes in this heavily tattooed, you tend to ask where they are, who, they're, who they are and where they're from. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Where, yeah, exactly. It's like, hey, you look like one of us. you got to be doing something. Exactly. Either <laughs> you're, you're either a rapper. Yeah, you're in a band. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's happened to me a bunch of times. If I go to a normal place, the, person, the first thing that people... Like if I go to a show... You play stand up bass, right? Exactly. <laughs> I don't get I don't get mistaken as a fucking tattooer. I get mistaken as a as a as, as a musician, and I yeah. am fucking far from that. You know what I mean? I mean to the point where like the like Big Sandy. We were just at a show last week, uh, three weeks ago. He came up, and you can tell it's like, dude, I'm not I'm not a musician. Man. I know like, he was. Super I, I, let me just cut, let me just stop you right exactly. There. I, I don't play a fucking band. exactly. I suck. <laughs> um, but um, but the point being is, it's like you know. That's something that should stand out. It's, it doesn't stand out the way it used to. I don't think. You know. Yeah, yeah. I think people take a lot for granted, or they're so in their own little. They're in their own little uh, world. They don't realize. Well, I wonder too, like because social media is such a prominent thing, but not many people like. I feel like you get made fun of if you post selfies and stuff. So it's like a, a lot of people might know the work, but they don't know the face behind it. Right. Because when you post a selfie, like maybe it's just me being a dick, but I'm just like, Ugh. well. <laughs> Okay, so and th this is where we get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, right, how do you shit. feel about how do you feel about the trend of mainly female tattooers that start every single you know reel off with a selfie in a mirror or this is what I'm wearing today and you know honestly if it works I have no fucking problem. Well, and that, and well, like, it, it's clearly working for them to keep doing it, yes. and that's what social media wants. They want facial recognition. They want and then like you know you. Fucking toss some caps on the ground or whatever. And fucking throw your like throwing your shit away. You gotta be like, a director. And you you gotta, gotta be exactly, like exactly. Which like I gotta be like I Scorsese. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, like I'm just grumpy and miserable all the time. Where I'm like I don't want to play that fucking game. Like, but but like and if if but it does suck because now most tattooers like in my generation or your or whatever like we're probably slower than we have been in a long time because we're not playing the fucking game yeah so it's like well, so do I, I need to fucking put my hair in pigtails and wiggle them around and like see, but throw some thing. fucking ink and shit I don't know I don't know it might work I don't know if it's a matter of not playing the game man because I think I honestly think it's generational I think that uh, young kids just feel like why would I get tattooed by someone who came 20-30 years ago I think now they look at it as man I know I know a bunch of guys been doing this for 5 years that are just as good. I can get just what I want from them, or they're just following the trends of what's going on right now, where they don't really stand out the way we did back in our time. Mm -hmm. Which is what I always bitch about is the fact that I don't think there's enough standout tattooers. Not to say there aren't, because there, there's, there's 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 almost too many. Out. Yeah, but <laughs> but stand out in the sense that they're doing something like and again, brand, like new, new. Yeah, and, but again, yeah. I I say that having come from a much smaller world, the world we live in yeah. now. I don't think that exists anymore. I'm not going to say that there's not somebody who's going to come out and be like, oh my God, that's incredible. Nobody's ever done that before. Yeah. And now it's just it's just not that anymore. I No, I agree. And like I feel like I, I've said it multiple times. I'm like, I am so lucky that I came out and like was doing the things I was doing when you at did. the exact time. Because it was like, I, I feel like I just caught that wave perfectly. And I wrote it for a pretty long time. Like now I'm, I'm kind of falling to the wayside, which is very okay. I am so happy with everything I think that, I've done and like where I was and like how, who I met, who my really core friends are through right. doing all that. 
Like, I don't need to do fucking 30 shows a year anymore. I don't really want to. No. And especially it, especially when you have a shop. You know? uh, yeah, yeah. And you have, like, a group of friends, and you have people that you trust, and you like being home, and you have fucking awesome cute animals to go back to. Yeah. You know, like, it's it's like, I don't need to be on the road all the whole time. But, like... I like I've said like my my age and my drive and the time it was were like completely aligned and perfect for what I needed to do. So you've been tattooing is it twenty years now? Yeah, a little over, just over twenty years. Because yeah. you said ninety three ish, right? Uh, two thousand four. Uh, two thousand four. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, in ninety three, I was six years old. Yeah, I was so. just saying. No, I was I was just <laughs> starting. I was twenty something. Um, but yeah, so now that's that's actually a good. Point because that's some that's one of the points I always try to say is like you know my first 20 22 years of my career were fucking it was just up 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 and I can go anywhere in the world and, and mm-hmm. tattoo no matter where I went and and it was phenomenal and then it started probably around 22 23 years it started it started to dip and I say to people nowadays that have been tattooing for say 10 years you know five years and they come out of the gate ripping mm-hmm. and this is something everybody says it's like well who fucking cares about you there are dudes tattooed. Like I look at the work that you did back in '93 or '95, say '96, when you, I made a name for myself, and they're like, "This shit's laughable." And I'm like, "Yeah, but it was a completely different day and age." It, yeah. And the thing is, it was mind blowing. Exactly. <laughs> and well, for the back in the day, yeah. yeah. But the thing is, everything you did from that from that point on made you stand out more because you just kept growing. Mm-hmm. Now, to hit that other cat's credit. He's right. Kids are coming out of the gate now, one year in, and they're fucking, you know, they're doing, yeah. yeah, they're doing Nico style fucking realism. They're yeah. doing your style new school. They're, yeah. I mean, they're blowing shit. They're blowing the doors off of shit, you mm-hmm. know? But again, it's like, so where do you go from there? Like that's, and that's the only reason I make that point. And, yeah. and this isn't me like, ha ha, fuck you. You got a five year career ahead of you. That's not my, <laughs> that's not my intention. Well, you're, you're 15 minutes is almost done. Exactly. Up. It's like, like TikTok, TikTok, baby. TikTok. <laughs> But also to that point too, like, or to go back a little bit, like, so I'm wondering if like the drive that we had to go cross country and like be at every show and like try to be in every magazine is that same effort now being the director and like making these videos. Like that's the same amount of effort kind of, it's just in a a new age. So like, so I won't discredit these people for letting their hair down and fucking, you know, doing slow-mo shots of and, and like for it, and like right? and like really like i feel like that amount of effort is what we did just in a very different way i just know what i think i wish i wish that they that both existed i wish that you could still have social media tiktok reels whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. and then we still had a, a, a hard like that's why i admire what tony's doing with skin art uh, with, with the, the skin the paper, skin paper paint. Uh, paint yeah, yeah. I just love, yeah. I just love that a I tangible think. magazine that's exactly. full of awesome shit. It's reasonably priced. That will be and yep. it's and it's made in a way that it is it's it's bookshelf worthy. It's, it's square bound. Absolutely, it's, it's an amazing book. Yeah. If you don't know about it, I'll put it in the fucking I'll put it in uh, the description of the video. Oh, it's yeah. Tony Chiavaro, he did the second episode with me. Um, and he's, he talks about skin paper paint. Yeah, he's incredible. Yeah. Like, and that dude, that guy's a he's, fucking right. He's definitely, yeah, there is nothing he does that's bad. And like, I, I stayed with him for a few days with my girlfriend, like last, last year. And I'm not even kidding. Like he, he'll stay up till fucking midnight. We'll just talk and have fun. And I'm like, all right, I got to go to bed. And like, he'll just be drawing. And then I wake up, he's already on the couch working on the fucking magazine, drawing some new flash. And I'm sitting there just and like he's raising a kid and, and he's married. Yeah, yeah. And and still traveling all the time. Yeah. And like I just don't fucking get it. Where I I can't even have a sip of water and he's already like have a flash sheet, half a magazine. Yeah. And he's like, What do you think of this? I'm like, dude, my eyes barely work. Yeah. How the fuck are you doing this? Dude, like, when when we did when we did the, don't get it. when we did when I went up there to do the, the, the interview with him and he was literally sitting at the desk just drawing. Yeah. And, and just for and fun. on his iPad. I think he's working on prints and stuff. I got maybe a new t-shirt design, I don't remember. But, but the whole time, so until we started it. filming, dude, he literally had his iPad in his, in his hand. We start we start filming. He puts the iPad away. We start talking. At one point, I have we had an issue with the mics. I break it down. I have to reset. It takes 15 minutes. He got the iPad back in his hand. He's yeah. fucking drawing. I'm like, Constant. How can you do that? That dude is a that. complete fucking He's, in, he's a fucking like, machine. It is unreal. It's unreal. And he never stops. It just... So if you had to say, like, for your from your perspective, who are your influences? Like, actually, I don't. I'm not sure if I want to go to that yet. Um, so styles. Let's get into that. Before you brought up that you started, you started going down the route of uh, of realism, and you came to the realization, like, and you are one of those guys. You remind me very much of like a Victor Chill. 
Like you can pretty much do whatever is brought to you, whether it be traditional. Not, not as effortlessly. No, Victor. Well, Victor is, is, is a fucking animal. Yeah, Victor is. He's incredible. He's like fucking. He's, he's like, probably one of the best actors in the world. He's like the opinion. Rain Man. Of fucking, yeah, 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 I, I yeah, would, I would yeah, go there. Right. I would put him up there. So like, my, like my, I would put him in my top three. I think for sure, especially like, for somebody who's so young, and just for how like his process. And like his his, I mean, he's so lovable. Where like we don't speak the same language, and we were best friends in a couple days. Oh God! Like yeah. he's like the <laughs> sweetest dude, and like our collab was the one of the best collabs I've ever done. Is this the first uh, the first the two of a kind? Two of a kind at, at, in Night Owl. The first yeah. one is important, but like the second one with Victor was great. But like we literally just took a huge piece of tone paper, and we just said, "All right, we're going to do like a skull tattoo machine." And he sat at one end of the table, and I sat at the other. Like, and we just both drew, and then kept just turning the page. And we drew the whole thing together. And it was just like, like no words. Yeah. He just, the only thing he kept doing, he's like, he looked at me, he's like, same brain. Same, because we yeah. like, like do the same. You know, yeah, because at this point, I think, I think Victor's, Victor's English is mediocre. Oh, it's way better he than He was with one. me for, he was with me for eight, five, he was supposed to be here for five days. And he stayed an extra three doing nothing. Like just hanging out. Really? Like he was busy the first five days he was here. And then on that on that sixth day, I'm like, hey, you want to go up to see? T- uh, or the, I think it was that fifth day. I was going to take him after work. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, uh, so uh, maybe I'll drop you off tonight, night owl. He goes, yeah. uh, maybe one more day. Uh, okay, cool. Like, all right. So now I got to figure out something to do the next day. So <laughs> yeah, we're going to yeah, 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 yeah. hang out. And <laughs> yeah. then he comes back to the house and he just he just sat in the bedroom, just talked to whomever he was with. I don't know what the deal, who he's talking to. And then the next day, I'm like, so we go up to a night owl today. And he goes, ah, maybe one more day. Dude, three more days. He was supposed to be with us for five years. And I'm not begrudging this because yeah, no, Victor is a wonderful... Even though he barely spoke any English. Yeah, he's a great... We person. had a wonderful time. Yeah. And then finally, the last day, the thing is starting the next day. I'm like, dude, I'm taking you up to night. You're, you're going right now. Go. And he's like, okay, today. I'm like, yeah. wow, what the fuck? Yeah, but, and then so I funny. went up there three days later and you guys were knee deep and shit. And I was, I was literally blown away. I, was, I will admit, I was fucking jealous because I was just like, how the fuck... And my, Christian got invited to this thing. How did I not get invited to this thing? Uh, that process of figuring out people. Yeah. With Frank, oh, I can imagine it's going to be I had to fly to Florida and stay there for four days so Frank and I could figure out all the logistics of, like, who's yeah. coming, who's picking them up from the airport, and, like, nobody's allowed to tattoo two days in a row, and, like, what names do we want to have there, and all this shit, and it was, like, it was actually Tony's idea. He's, like, get all the Europeans you can. That's that would to be honest with you. And that's that all was, and Tony's so fucking caught up with he knows every like all the artists in that skin paper paint are like, I just have to follow everybody. I'm like, how the fuck do you find these people? That's the thing that blew He's my mind. So on top of the new modern way of tattooing. And this He's is a guy so and this is a guy who doesn't have an editing staff. It's him. It's all him. That blows, all him. That, it blows yep. my mind. The fact the quality of the artists. Uh, you know, and again, in on Instagram, I may have breezed past one said you know put a heart on it and he, fucked off yeah because yeah. you never think to, to go back and he look like studies these people and dude <laughs> yeah. i'm absolutely it's really blown impressive. away absolutely blown away by well, well just the fact it's like how the fuck do you draw constantly make all these new shirts make this new flash now he's painting doing graffiti and like has the magazine and then you also are on social media all the time finding new artists like yeah three he's yeah, yeah. like we're the how are you? Then you have a kid who's fucking awesome. Like Max is the coolest little dude ever. I, yeah, I, I, I met and him. His and his wife is just amazing. So I'm like, yeah. how the hell? Like I can barely handle two cats. And, well, and, and that's the thing. Is, like, you never know, mind all the other shit. I think the normal thing would be to say he's like, oh well, he's just you know, he's like that's just who he is. Blah blah blah. I'm like no man, no, that's, no, that's no, just you, a lot of hard work. Yeah, you just you're training. You were. That's that's not just who that you is are. somebody who has you an are, idea. You have such discipline, and you yes, just like discipline. are so you're just that's someone who has a di- who has an idea in the direction in which he wants to go, and just and he's fucking doing knows. It. Yep. Yeah, yep. I think I could. I wish I had that in me. I, I mean, I, at one point, I think I did. Not to that degree. No, never I, that no, degree. I've never been to that degree. But I also was very yeah. I was very driven for a long time, and now I'm like, you know what? Like petting cats for a while and like watching TV is actually kind of nice. Yeah. Like, I don't want to draw all the time. It is, like, so, and sometimes I'm just not fucking motivated. To. Yeah. I think that's one of the things like I was just got asked recently how do you keep your motivation up? I mean how do you I mean me I'm driven by my, my clients. I'm driven by the people I work with. I mean, same. That's yep. really kind of what pulls me. So would you say the same thing? Yeah. It's like that. Is there anything that's a drive but, like burning inside you to see happen? Uh, only when 
I feel like that happens when I have a few days off and maybe I'm walking through Michael's and I see some like weird little stupid Halloween thing and I'm like, that's a fucking great idea. I have to draw that. Right. Or like a lot of times it happens when I'm dreaming. So I'll wake up and like just like write notes on my phone or like I have a really cool idea in my head. Uh, and like I just I need to like text it so that when I have time, I'm going to draw it. But I mean, uh, yeah, aside from just keeping up with, like, I work with nothing but amazing fucking people at the shop. Yeah, you guys. So it's like when you see a cool drawing from somebody else, it's like almost that bitterness and jealousy is driving. But then it's like, okay, like, you want to be happy for them mostly. But then you're like, I want to do something cool too. I think, I think that being being in the shop that there's a bit, there's a bit of friendly rivalry is a really important. I shouldn't say important. Well, but when, it, when, it you're, a, when, when a, you're the best healthy. at the shop or whatever, and you think that you're the shit. The worst person to be. The, the, wor- that's the, ex- like the worst thing to look for is for you to just be like, well, yeah, I'm king shit. It's Coming like, in no. today, going to crush like, some heads. Like, yeah, you're like, hey, everybody, <laughs> your drawing sucks. <laughs> Check it out. Awesome. Like, it's like, suck. Suck. <laughs> suck. <laughs> suck. Perfect. Yeah. yeah <laughs> well, you wished you were me. For sure. <laughs> no, I fucking, I'll get in there and I'll see a drawing from fucking Patrick or Lindsay or Jesse. And I'm just like, Fuck! That is such a cool idea, or like such a great like. I love the lighting, and I'm like I want to use that palette. You know, like I feel like it's. But you also have to give him a give him an attaboy. You know, like yeah, it's exactly. amazing and exactly. good for you. I, but now I, it pushes me to be like, yeah, I need to do something fucking. Cool. So like I said, I got I got to come in. I got to come up on the outside lane. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> running. Yeah, then. hope I don't cause a car accident. But I think the best part about it is it used to be. Who got more likes and who got more comments on social media as comparison? Now I feel like it's transferring back to like in person. It's in-house. that's just fucking cool in house and like yeah, like or even just like I feel like I pay way less attention now to likes and comments from anybody I see. Where it's like that's just a good tattoo. I don't give a fuck if it has twelve likes or if it has fucking fourteen million likes and a hundred thousand comments. But like sh- it's still good. Or like sometimes you see bullshit. That has that you're like, oh, that's, that's, that's just bad. You just suck at his dick for no reason. It's not even so much that it's just bad. It's also just so what the fuck ever. Yeah. It's not yeah, like. It's whatever. Exactly. It's not like <laughs> anything that you're going to look at and be like, oh my God, that's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And like, I I just think like that it used to be such a testament to everything. Like in any sort of, like let's say sponsorship or any article is just like, oh, you have this many followers? Like, we want to interview you. And I feel like now that's completely changing, or at least maybe just changing in my brain. Where, like, it used to matter. I used to love having a lot of followers because it, like, meant something and it, it got you places. Yeah. And now I'm like, I don't give a fine fuck. <laughs> oh, dude. I, you know, and, and I agree. I think it's it's more important to have a handful of followers. And I mean by handful nowadays. Like the people that look at your shit. Exactly. Like, These are people that are actually interacting with you. These are people that are more likely to get tattooed. Like, I can say I have whatever, how many followers, but they're, they're worldwide. Most of them probably started following me fucking when Instagram first started. They, yeah. they, probably, they probably, I haven't been on their feed in decades. You know what I mean? Um, recently, I just did the, the Honest Tattoo podcast. I probably picked up a few thousand followers from that. The only reason they're fucking following me is A, to fucking troll me later on down the line because I have a big fucking mouth. Or I, I have a big wait fucking mouth. You, wait for you to yeah. just say the wrong fucking or thing. Or I have a big mouth and they're just like, oh, I want to hear more of this fucking nightmare. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah that's so, a 50-50. Right yeah, there. exactly. So, I mean, you take the good with the bad, but the fact of the matter is it doesn't help me business-wise. I'm still slow as shit, so yeah. what does it matter? You know yeah, I mean? yeah. So, and it's... I am, I guess, like, going back to what we said, it's like playing the game, boosting posts, like paying for all this extra shit. It's like... I mean, we'll do it if we have to. But I've tried. It doesn't help. I think that right now the main reason I use Instagram is because it's free. I mean, it, it's just there. It's yeah. there. It's 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 it's. I still put stuff on Facebook. It's just there. I don't. Yeah. Even, I don't look at it as being good or bad. I look at it as it's just an it's a, it's an it's a necessity. And again, that's why yeah. I'm supporting stuff like Tony's magazine because. I truly dig what he's doing. As a matter of fact, I'm in the next episode with that issue, which I'm pretty. Oh, look uh, at you. Yeah, exactly. I'm pretty. I'm. I'm excited to see who else is going. I'm like, there. yeah, I was in the first one. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, <laughs> how cool is it? No, like, honestly, the, like the biggest honor of all time. Is and like, when Tony asked me to do anything, I'm like looking around, like me, me, like still, and like Tony, I've been friends for a long time. At this which point. is which is not which but, is nice, dude. But it's still like it's always an honor. Same with doing this, like getting asked to be on your podcast or getting asked from Tony to do anything. Dude, I've like, looked at having I, text Sean will like Sean Herman will text me cat pictures. I'm like, you guys are like my heroes. You know that, right? <laughs> like, but I think it's that's, very cool. But that's the nice thing about this business is the fact that not everything has to be rock star fan. You know what I mean? And that's I've never really I've always been embarrassed by it. 
um, being put on this bullshit pedestal because it is bullshit. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean a goddamn thing. Um, so I think the fact that you're able to go someplace... It does to the people who look up to you, though. And, and you, you know what? Maybe you're right, me put me downplaying it and actually acting like it's fucking lame. <laughs> um, I mean, you've never had, like, a rock star that you, like, would be, like, very I, excited to meet. I have said something. that. Like, so they, like so Olivia from... Uh, a pinup artist from California. I have followed her from, I think, 84 was the first time I'd seen her work. And that's what got me wanting to airbrush. I shouldn't say that. I was airbrushing before. But she was one of the first airbrush artists at the time that did pinup work that I was enamored by. And I followed her career the ent- my entire time. When I got to meet her back in mid-2000s, I think? Like 2005, 2008? No, it was maybe later, 2009. Um, I was just like, holy shit. I, I was that dork. I was just Dude, like, so, but, oh my God. But that's like not a dork. That's But that's the feeling. That's yeah. like, that's the same thing. Like when I guess. Tony asked me to I, do I, shit or me doing this. It's like, it is that feeling where I'm like calling my girlfriend on the way here. Like, I'm fucking nervous. Like, this is scary. But it, it shouldn't be. It's funny. Jesse, Jesse, Jesse Ray was on it last week. And she, you could tell the first half hour, 40 minutes of the interview, her voice has got a quake in it. And it, it took a little bit and she was super calm afterward and she just chilled out. Yeah, and it takes that's, a minute. And that's kind of what, I don't want this to be like, I want it to be fun. I want it to be, a, I want to be able to reminisce stuff and bring it to other people because that's the whole point yeah. of this. But like, you have to understand. I it's guess. you. I guess. Like, I think, but again, it I is fucking I scary. Think, I don't think that matters. Well, uh, I mean, it, it, it does though. All right. Well, I think it's fucking lame. I think you're fucking lame. Oh, no, I'm, I'm so sorry to try to say that. Um, okay, so okay, so styles. Like, we can go back to styles. Um, so styles, man. Like, like for real. Like, what makes you think? What makes you? Uh, like you said before. Like you might see an image. You might see a. Uh, 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 it might have a dream. Whatever. But what? Uh, do you, can you? Do you? Can you push your style? Can you think of your style? In any way of in like graffiti or like everybody likes to use the word new school or whatever. I mean, do you have anything that you would say is like, yeah, this is and who's your inspiration besides Victor? Is there a, is there outside inspirations? Manga, fucking or anime, um, cartoons, anything, you know? Uh, I mean, I feel like a lot of people would probably say Ren and Stimpy with those close ups. Yeah. Those are fucking disgusting. Yeah. And I feel like that. You're into texture. Yeah, I love the texture. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, like, as far as, like, tattooers go, like, the way I started was obviously just doing nothing but walk-ins, and then I wanted to do realism, because I, like, everybody's drawn to realism at first, I think. Like, yeah. everybody likes, and, like, clients love seeing shit that's familiar, and they, they, they're drawn to it, but then I ended up, when I moved to Virginia, I worked for a traditional tattooer, and it was, like, I love how solid and clean, and, like, my realistic tattoos up against his traditional tattoos looked so weak because I didn't quite get it yet either. I was still pretty new. Right. So it's like, I'm only a couple of years in and I was just like, all right, so now I want to add these like traditional elements into realism, which became like neo tread. And I'm looking at like loose lips stuff. You know, like, I mean, uh, you know, like, is fucking, like, Bob, I mean yeah. yeah, where it's like, he is like the pinnacle of simplicity. But like, since I had this kind of realism brain, I couldn't simplify it that much. So it just turned into like, fuck. I, 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 it's a I, good I, I, mix. It, so like for me, and I still love doing realism. I still like, and I like doing traditional. I still like doing new school. Whatever the fuck new school means anymore. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Like it, it's, 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 it's everything. Yeah, exactly. It's a hybrid. But I mean, like at first I'm looking at, you know, I'm looking at like you, Tony. I'm looking at Sean, Josh Woods. I'm looking at like Nick Baxter, Jeff Ensminger, right. Nate Beavers, Paul so, Acker. It's funny. So it's like everything, that you group, just, everything you just named is a good amalgamation of like when you look at what you do. Everything is there. It's like, yeah, it's just <laughs> yeah, like, it's like, to be. it's like this brain with all these like fucking these hoses pumping into it <laughs> yeah. all around it. Yeah, where I'm just like getting every magazine I can. I'm like, that fucking rules. I love that. Like, I love that composition. I love this color. I love this texture because Sean is always doing weird bubbly gross shit. Yeah. And you know, I'm like, I want that. You know, and I want this. So eventually it just turned into that. But like outside stuff for me, it's, I don't look at like many, like, I mean, like obviously Crayola fucking rules. Fuck yeah. I mean, you can't go wrong with him, but like, I've been trying to look at less artists and more like, like I said, goofy shit at Michael's or just like something outside where I'm like, oh, that bench looks like it has a fucking skull face in it. Like, I'm going to take a picture of that. I'm like, that's a good idea for a wooden skull. Like, so I'm trying to get more out of looking at everyone else's art and just doing... I think your stuff machine. too, you deal a lot with perspectives. Like when you're, when you're doing stuff with the machine, you're dealing with really like really crazy force, persp- uh, like force work perspective. Yeah, shit that would never make sense in and real depth. life. Yeah, yeah. It's like my, my biggest thing, it's like I want it 
I want it to look like it could exist. Like, say it's like a pomegranate hand grenade. It's like, I want it to be rendered like you might see it at a grocery store, but you right. know it could never actually be. Right. So it's like, I want things to just be convincing enough, but so out of reality that like you kind of forget it's not real. Well, and I think that's what really kind of sets your stuff apart from a lot of other people's is the, is the amount of, you know, rich, realistic detail that goes into something without giving up the, I don't want to use the word animated, but it does remind me, or, or cartoony or illustrative feel yeah, to the stuff. So you have like, you are all those words. Like? And well, but again, <laughs> yeah. again, they're hard words to kind of really <laughs> yeah. fucking focus on. Yeah. But it is one of those things, like I think that's what really makes your stuff really stand out from anybody, be, and including Victor and a lot of other guys, you know what I mean? Um, and I think that's that that's impressive as fuck, you know? That's impressive Man, as I fuck, appreciate it. You it's, know? it's literally just trying to, f- not even trying, it's like just doing what makes sense to you and like being happy with where you are, where it's just like, People might not fucking like everything you do, and it's not. Oh, obvious. you've done stuff that I was just like, Ooh. Oh, but that's everybody. Yeah. I mean, oh, I, no. I, you know, it wasn't uh, same here. Yeah, Pretty I'm much ninety nine percent of what I do, I'm like, oh god. Yeah, same here. All right, well, could have yeah. done that different. But it, but it is it is one of those things where you do look at certain things and you go, oh well, now that's gonna look like age. But I, I do that, and that's me being a bit of a douche. Well, like you you can't help but look at things with a critical eye. Well, of course, and like I love, well, I guess I've seen so many artists that I really admire just completely make the switch to traditional because of longevity, and I'm like, I still want to like push it to really see, like I'm not, I'm not like so convinced that stuff that is more dynamic and has these like more blends like won't hold up, and it very well might not, but I'm not willing to like give up yet. So here, it's, you know I mean? it's funny you say that because there are a lot of artists that I admired as artists, like artists, you know what I mean? That, that started with a bit of a traditional uh, uh, background, but did more of a painterly kind of style. And they did it so well. And now they are just straight up, no bullshit, old school 70s style exactly. traditional, which yeah. is like Japanese, like American traditional, whatever. Um, and it's, uh, I don't want to use the word clunky, but it's a bummer to see that. Yeah. But I also see myself 30 years, 31 years, almost 32 now. And I'm like, I see myself sliding back to, okay, one or two weights of line weight. Exactly, yeah. And you start you start falling back. And, and the fear I'm having is the fact that it's like, dude, are you afraid to, to walk with you guys? And you feel this is, you know, this is the lane you should be in now? Like this uber traditional, break your stuff down, keep it simple, because you can't keep up with the fucking left lane anymore? Like that's the fear as an older artist that I have. You know what I mean? But I still, I can't help but admire, look at, and and really just envy what is, what's happening in your, in your lane. And it's, it is freaky. So I'm, I'm at, right now I'm in the middle lane. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm well, not going to full right. Well, you know? yeah. <laughs> well, towing that line is so hard because like, yeah, like I now have tattoos that are fucking 20 years old and you see them and you're like, yeesh. you know, and like now like, to, but, but there's also tattoos that I've done that are 15 years old and I'm like, that actually, it yeah. it healed and looks like it should. It looks like a fifteen year old tattoo, like a 15 year old but it, tattoo. but it, but it doesn't like it. It's not like oh my god, the whole thing's gone. It's like it still has structure. It still has blends. It wasn't made with star bright yellow, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or any orange, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but but yeah, it's like so that. But it is like I just I, like I'm not ready to give up the special effects and the textures just yet. I'm trying to figure out how to do them better. Where like, right. even like at the seminar you were at where I'm talking about like putting gray under everything. So if it all falls out, you still have that gray line to like right. kind of redo it. So it's like, I'm still doing that with color lines on top. So it's like, there is that skeleton under it. Right. It's not all just like lining something and fucking. Caramel. There is something that you, yeah. gonna, when you look at it in 15 years, you're not looking at, these weird gaps where lines kind of used to be or exactly yeah. like there is a structure under that. It's and, just not traditional. It's and, not a traditional structure. Exactly. So it's like, I'm still, I'm still trying to see. And like, I, I, like I said, I'm just not ready to give up on using lighting and special effects and all that stuff. Like I'm just, I'm not there, but I, I get why people do it because like, God, traditional tattoos look fucking amazing forever. They always look awesome. It's just not who like I am. Who you, you are. You know? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, one of the things I wanted to talk about, and this is something I think out of everybody I've sat with so far, you are one of the few artists that is still 100% coils. Not anymore. Oh, you motherfucker. I, you were thinking, I got a guy. This no, is going to be amazing. I, no, I you did make the switch. I huh? had to. Yeah, I, uh, 
I was in France and I was like working at the Evian show, which I love, and all of my coils ran like fucking shit. And they all like could barely do anything. And I've like I have my power stuff. I've worked at that show a thousand fucking times. And all my coils ran like shit. And I'm good friends with Carson. And he like he, I haven't he was there. I, I had a Numa. No, 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 he wasn't okay. there. But uh, I had a Numa like at the shop, and I'm like, you know what? Maybe it's time I give it an honest try. And I started using the Numa and going back and forth with my coils. But like having a fucking wireless tattoo machine with a battery, I'm way slower. I tattoo way differently. Yes. Uh, like I will. I will definitely say I'm not as proficient and like not as I don't know like. It's a, it's just, it's just different, but like my heels are great. It just takes me longer. Like I literally had to relearn how to tattoo, but I really wanted to give it an honest shot. So I so am you, with the Numa now. And it's now, been like a year or so. So let me ask you, oh, it's been that long. Oh, yeah. I had no idea. I yeah. yeah. Well, I know people like Shane uses the Numa here and he's, he raves about it. I use, I'm still not on the wireless tip. I mean, I have machines I get from Electric Ink and they're probably the best machines as far as pens are concerned that I've used. Um, and, uh, but again, I still find myself using these transverse nanos, which are similar to a Kuban, but they're, oh, yeah. not, they're not the fucking hammers that Kubans are. They have a, yeah. a lot more subtlety in them. They're more like coils. And I really, really dig that. I, I miss the, uh, what I like the most about needles on the bar is that you have the armature and you have the tip of the needle and there's no, you know what I mean? It, it's not like when you're using co- uh, cartridges where you have that weird, you have the fucking plunger and then you got the fucking, you have the stem and then you have the fucking needles. Oh, yeah. There's something lost in that. In For sure, translation, well, and that's why it's so different. Like you literally have to relearn how to tattoo when you yeah. use cartridges. But like, but I will say for traveling and everything, it's way uh, more convenient. It's now. funny. Just this morning, like I'm getting ready to go to a convention in like ten days. There's a show in Lenore, North Carolina, and uh, I did Hell City uh, back in May, mm-hmm. and I did a show in June right after. And I was going to bring my transverse because I mean I just really dig them. I could fucking move like fast, like as as fast as you can with the coil, like not faster, and. Um, the whole t- today, I'm I'm getting I'm grabbing my iPad to do this, and I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll just take my pens to fucking Lenore. <laughs> but it's just it's it's, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, I bring I bring I have I do have a liner and a shader because they they're adjustable. Um, so I, I have one for lining, one for shading, and I'm like, dude, I take I take these pens and they're fucking they're killer. And, I, and again, it takes yeah. less space. I don't have to bring a bunch of tubes and everything. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I'm, I may not. I may still sw- I, I may still change because I'm mean, driving a little more. So it's it's nice oh, to have to oh, be able to just take whatever the fuck I want. That's yeah, that's the best. Exactly. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, with, with like, like I mean, I used coils for 19 years. Yeah, you were a big. Like, so you were. I was like one of the last people that yeah. fucking still did. Dude, yeah, like last time I was at your shop, you were yeah. you were tattooing with coils, and I think Willie was tattooing with. Uh, yeah, yeah. With the oh my god, can we talk about the way Willie tattoos? Have oh, you watched super, him tattoo? Uber clean. But like, how the fuck does he do it? He literally does it like Tabori style, and it's smooth as fuck. Have you really watched you know what's him? Funny, no, I haven't. Holy shit! Because usually when he's here, I'm tattooing as well. You have to watch him. Really? I like. I would. I would tell any apprentice to not watch this guy tattoo. Yeah, he's not. Yeah, it doesn't make any fucking sense, and it's perfect. His stuff is super, super. clean. It's so clean. He's but like, I'm not clothes. kidding. He just barely flicks at you, and it's just there. Well, let's talk about the talent pool coming out of fucking Spain. What because, the fuck? Wait, what's again, happening? Like there? Victor, fucking, uh, um, I'm drawing blanks on all the fucking names, but Willie and uh, who's the other cat that um, kind of a graffiti guy? Uh, oh, God. I mean, there's a dumb yeah, 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 yeah. so guy. But, but yeah, yeah. We, we could edit that out. We do remember everybody. We just, no, I know. Right it's just not by fucking names. <laughs> God damn. But yeah, no, like the, the talent coming out of most European countries. I they're unbelievable. Well, insane. they're also, sur- oh, well, I'm going to just like down credit, like downplay America because I'm like, they're surrounded by art. Of course they're good. Well, they're surrounded. But it's like, by- also we can just Google it and have the same shit. So, uh, wait, there's no excuse. Like, there's a difference between <laughs> growing up in fucking Connecticut. Imagine growing up in Bridgeport, Connecticut, yeah, yeah. <laughs> walking out of your house every day and fucking gunshots and bullshit. And living in fucking Barcelona. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's there's I grew up in a town called difference. Belcher Town. Yeah, exactly. So, so but there's not much uh yeah, no, no, like, 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 rural architecture Mas- there. like rural Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah. I think about Tom. Every time yeah, I, to go I grew home, I grew up like twenty minutes from Tom. Okay, so yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's dude, an orange or Ethel, right? Yeah, Ethel. Like, yeah, Ethel. Yeah, and he is so, not happy when he goes home. No, no, Jack, so I, yeah, I grew up like super close yeah, to him. Sketchy. Yeah. See, I, yeah. Driving through Massachusetts is sketchy, dude. I feel like I'm going through the Ozarks. It's fucked. <laughs> no offense to anybody who's from fucking Western it's a, Mass. It's a beautiful place. Move to Western Mass. Yeah, I mean, it is beautiful. <laughs> it, 
as long as you don't stop. You know? <laughs> North Hampton's a wonderful place. Well, when you were using coils, you were... I remember you being a big proponent of... Uh, Keith, uh, Keith B. B. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's the best. You know what's funny? I never, I, Keith's a wonderful human being. I, even when I was... Well, I was... When I met him, I was just getting off coils. Oh, that sounded weird. Uh, just getting off the dope. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, like, but, you but I was just out? getting off. And I, and I remember running some, and I'm like, dude, I'm not buying this. I'm not, I'm not using them right now. It doesn't make sense, you know? Yeah, but they're, his machines are the best. Like, I... Before that, I used, like, some Aaron Kane, some Soba stuff, like, yeah. Workhorse, and... Uh, some sunskins. I think they're. Oh known. God, I have. I remember the two of them back yeah, in the day. Yeah, yeah, they were from Spain, I think. Too. Yeah, I think yeah. from Spain. Yeah. And so. uh, yeah, I used to. Uh, I used to use those, and then I met Keith in Miami, and he was. He was just just like my wife told me to like let you borrow a machine because she likes your stuff. <laughs> it's like, okay. You know what the funny thing is how 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 much influence back in the day did the wives have? And I know that sounds misogynistic, and it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> but when you when you go to shows, like I mean, certain individuals that you dealt with over the years, their wives, and the reason why I say this, it was an artist named Bill Tarr who owned a shop in Pennsylvania. He's passed away now. But his wife Ruth, she was the one that she was one of the first people to ever buy my flash. Was really, always supportive. And through her, I got to meet him. And and that's happened on several occasions. When I met this guy Rocco out on the West Coast, it was through his wife, who was a seamstress. Like it's all it's the wives have. It's almost like they have a different eye because they're not they're not enamored. By the glitz and the bullshit of the magazines and the conventions, mm-hmm. they're more about the individual. Interesting, and that yeah. was a that was a really nice thing. Yeah, yeah. But Becky, Becky B, she, she, Becky B, that's Keith B and Becky B. That's a good. <laughs> oh yeah, they're fucking awesome. But yeah, it was, it was funny. And then I was like, dude, I I like can't afford to buy a machine. I really like it, but I I can't like afford anything right now. This is in the days where like, you know, I'm, like you go you go on show to show day to day. Yeah, I don't have fucking money for that shit. And it was just like, uh, I ended up buying or getting like two of them for like the price of one. Right. Because I'm like, all right, I really like these. He's a minor one day, shader next day. And then after that, I just never used anything but his right. stuff. I love it. I, I think there's something to be said for that. I mean, I've often said it's not a it's not a sponsorship, it's a friendship. And that means a lot. Oh, that that is a great conversation too when it comes to sponsorships. Because I feel like everybody is just fucking begging for him all the time. Where it's like... Buy the shit and get to know the people and fucking stop begging people for shit. Where it's like, get to know them. Or Talk worse, to them. acting like, like you've made it because some dude is giving you his garbage. Fucking so stupid to me. Where it's like, I get, I get, I actually just got asked that recently. Where like, do you ask for sponsorships or do whatever? I'm like, I would fucking never. Like, I buy something or I use something and then I write them and just say, this product is awesome. Thank you for making it. I'll continue to be a customer. I appreciate it. And if they say, would you like to be sponsored? Then I'll de- decide if I want to be or not. It, yeah. But it's like, I'm not asking for that shit. And like, I want to know these people first too. Like that shit drives me crazy. Well, how many, so you don't have to name names, but how many people in the years that you've been doing this that say sponsorships have come up or sponsorships that you did, did honestly take and then you find out something that you find to be truly like, Fuck this guy. Fuck these people. I want out. How, could, and you don't have to name anybody, obviously. No. The, but uh, would uh, you say it's happened before? Or you, you've had a pretty good run of it. Uh, honestly, I've had a great run because I like I I definitely kind of vet companies and like talk to them first and like just try to get to know them the best I can. I would say the only time that I was genuinely terrified is when these huge corporations come and buy a company. Which is happening all across the board. Oh, yeah. Like, so you like, can't... Like three major companies you can't touch now because it's all corporate. Well, that, and that's what scared me where like with, I mean, I could just say it like, fuck it. I mean, Eternal got bought out. Kingpin yeah. got bought oh, out. I think most people know. Everybody right? fucking does that. Yeah. But like, so my thing is I'm reaching out to my like liaisons and the people. So it's like, am I dealing with like corporate people and like who the fuck are they? Yeah. Or am I going through you? And luckily those corporations are just like, everybody gets to keep their job. You still deal with me one-on-one. And like, so you don't have anything to worry about because like, if they if those corporations are going to be all shitty and fire all my friends, I'd be like, go fuck yourself. Well, I think that, I think that's why like, they're that's why they're almost more evil. And I, I don't know, if that's <laughs> but that's that's diabolical, but because they know it's like, dude, you can't change the face. The moment you change the face, then all of a sudden nobody wants to deal with them anymore because this is still a mom and well, kind of a mom and pop operation when it comes to tattooers and cor- and, yeah. and and suppliers. It is not anymore. But, Def- yeah. yeah, definitely not. But uh, but also, uh, like to that point, too, it's like I, I'm still happy that my friends have their same job. 
Right. And maybe they're making more money. Maybe they're happier. Maybe they actually have like more leeway because so, someone's not breathing down their neck anymore. It's yeah. like it's like we just bought the company. You guys know what you're doing. We'll leave you the fuck alone. Yeah, you guys run it. Yeah. So it's like oh, I'm hoping that's the case. And I haven't heard any complaints from any of the people I talked to from those companies that did get bought out. Yeah, I know. Like so, in down down in in uh, in, in Brazil, uh, Paulo owned Electric Inc. Holy, he took in a kid, a younger guy, uh, probably actually Paulo's age. And his he was a he was a he was a, involved in the medical industry and somehow, but he got involved with Apollo and he said, "Hey, I'll I'll run the business, you do R and D." And dude, since then the, the leaps and bounds that Electric Inc has made with pigments, machines, everything across the board. And again, I'm saying this again. He's a friend. He's not, I'm not sponsored. Mm-hmm. Everything I use is from them, but it's not because I'm sponsored. I truly do because for years. Uh, for a fucking decade, I brought the pigment into the comp- into the country to sell. I would buy it from myself. I couldn't just take it because it was still money out of my pocket. Mm-hmm. You know, so in order to keep the book straight, I would purchase it at a cost. At, at cost, I sold it to the guys here at, at cost at plus shipping, whatever. But uh, but the fact is, like I've watched that company make leaps and bounds. Technically, they're corporate, but they're not owned by a corporation. They're owned. They're still solely just those two guys. Yeah. And that's impressive as fuck. I For was, sure. I would have loved to have seen something like that happen here with Eternal. And Well, I mean, it well, is technically Mario. Uh, intense. Well, I was going to... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. And intense like Red- Redemption is still like Redemption and Stencil So stuff. there you go, person. Like, yeah. So, yeah, like, and like, yeah, so they've not... So they, you guys haven't been... You're nope. not part of anybody. You're nope. still getting distributed through Eternal, though, no? Oh, no, we're getting distributed through uh, Stencil stuff with Mario. Okay, so, and that's still him. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, so well, fantastic. it's still all of us. It's myself, Billy Vegas, Maddie, Right. And our Uncle Maddie Supplies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw him recently. Yeah, uh, he's, he's fucking hilarious. I think in Richmond I saw him recently. Yeah. yeah. So, like, Redemption's still that, like, through Stencil stuff, and they're not bought out by anybody. Mario's still doing Stencil so stuff. That, so, it still exists. So, like, it's TattooStuff.com still... is still a thing where it's, like, it's it, nobody's nobody's corporate there. It's them. But it's them. Fuck, man, if I can get bought out, that'd be pretty cool. Well, and... <laughs> I, I, so, having said everything I just said, and here's where I fucking contradict myself, you know, it's, I, used to, I used to say the same thing about the television shows. When I did the TV shows, what oh, you yeah, saw was me. About that. I was never, I never was told, I mean, I was told to do certain things and I'd be like, no, fuck you. I have a reputation to uphold. And, and, yeah. I, and they didn't have to tell me too much because I, I got a big mouth and I, I guess I was good for TV. Um, <laughs> yeah, no but I will admit, if I were getting paid Nunez and Peck money, you would totally do You would, oh, dude, I'd be a totally different person. Thousand percent. I'd be a total, I mean, because it comes down to, the, if you're paying me to be a certain thing, I'll be that thing. But when you're not paying me enough to be anything beyond me, then that's all you're getting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think supply companies are a very similar situation, you know? Yeah. Um, and again, I don't necessarily, I think a lot of, I think the sponsorship thing went south because you do have a lot of people jumping from one brand to another just because they're offering, oh, instead of giving you 150 a month, we're going to give you $200 worth of product a month. Uh, yeah. yeah. And that's that's when it like fucks me up where a little bit where we had some people that we sponsored with Redemption and it was just like, Oh, uh, like like give them free shit because like they're personal friends of mine, and like, well, this other company is gonna like give us free shit and pay us two hundred bucks a month, and it turns and, into this and they, content, and they just jump, they just jump ship, or it's like, I thought we were cool, like, like well, I didn't, I didn't realize that. it was only financial, which I guess negates kind of what I said, where I'm like, yeah, buy me up, fuck whatever. Well, but the but thing- I still like I want integrity though. It's like uh, thank you. So thank it's like I, even if I did get an offer to be bought out, I'd probably be like, yeah, you can fuck yourself. I, I like the fact that tattoo artists owned and operated so, exactly, which so, is a big deal, and, and yeah. that, that's becoming that's becoming. Oh, well, it's funny. I think it was getting smaller, but now I think you've got more grassroots stuff happening. You've got a lot of these, and again, way too many. No, nothing against Redemption. You guys were one of the first. Um, but the fact is, is like how many brands like that exist? And There's people ask everywhere. us all the time. It's like oh, I want to send you some. I'm like, dude, we got a. I, fr- I have a friend in California. His wife makes an herbal balm, and it's good for anything. We use it for tattooing. You can use it for burns. You can use it for, yep. I'm sure the same thing. Same thing. Yep. But it's one of those things. It's all natural, and I'd rather support a friend mm-hmm. than deal with. Because I mean, Richie was one of this. Is going to burn some fucking bridges, but <laughs> fuck. Um, but Richie was one of the first people. Who was just like, I'm going to give it to you, and I'm like, how much does it cost? Well, I'm going to give it to you. And I'm like, how much does your product cost? Because I, I have to sell it to my clients. And he was just, and he just could not get that through his head that I didn't care who was giving me. I want to buy it off of you because the moment I find something better, I'm going to switch. Yeah, because yeah. I am about giving my clients the best product ever. Mm-hmm. And his, I mean, we, I mean, again, Hustle Butter, Redemption, Afterlife, whatever the fuck it was called for the longest time, <laughs> yeah. all sprung from the same well. 
Oh, yeah. And then it all kind of went off on its own. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I knew a little bit of the background, I'm like, I don't care about any of you. Yeah. Well, Billy Vegas actually made Redemption in his kitchen. So it's a whole different thing. No. Okay. But Afterlife and Hustle Bar are the same. Exactly. But Redemption was different. So, Billy again, actually, so I, don't, I will admit, I don't know all the ingredients. Yeah, so Billy actually took, like, the ingredients that he liked about Afterlife, and then Richie and him were supposed to be in business, and then, like, they just had a falling out. So Billy, Go like... Figure. Billy so like had a falling out with fucking isn't Richie? That, isn't that crazy? Yes. <laughs> could, you, could you roll your eyes a little harder? But, uh, no, that but yeah, so that, that's the only reason that like redemption was like that's why I was drawn to it. Where and I liked Richie, I liked Billy. I mean, good. They were partners with Afterlife. Like, right. They were all we were all friends. But yeah, Billy just like made stuff in his kitchen that was better, and so I was like, yeah, yeah stuck it. We'll and again, that. I think like you said, it's something to be said for to be tattoo around. You know I mean, because yeah. the matter is, you know, I don't know about the Afterlife guy, but I'm pretty certain he had nothing to do with tattooing. Oh, I don't think so. No, exactly. I, it was just like a, a bomb. I, I actually don't really know. Like, I I was brought in I want to say by I met, Richie. Yeah, I want to say I met both of them. I met I met the other guy at the same time I met Richie. And then it all went squirrely. Yeah, everything got I'm really like, fucking right, weird. I went and that was the other thing, too. I was turned off by all the bullshit business stuff. And I'm like, all right, you guys can go fuck yourself. I don't need to be part of this. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's another thing with, with sponsorships, too, where, like, I feel like tattooers were all just friends. Like, back when I started, when I really first started doing shows, like, everybody got along, everybody was having a good time, and then once sponsorships really came in thick, everybody fucking hated each other. Oh, dude. Because it turned into, like, this war all of a sudden. It's like, oh, you're with Fusion, and you're with Eternal, go fuck yourself. It's like, we were cool, like, a month ago. In the early days, like, in the the early 2000s, people would come up to us and just be like, you guys are the first ones to ever sponsor, you and Eric, mainly Eric, before me, because he brought me into the fold with Pulse. And I'm like, what do you mean sponsored? I'm like, dude, we just use their shit. And they're just like, well, you're sponsored by them, aren't you? And I'm like, no, those are friends of ours and we're using their gear to help promote their gear. We're not really sponsored. Like I would, I also use Seth Safari machine. Oh, I'm not Seth, but Aaron Kane machines. I've yeah. got some Papillon machines. I've got stuff all over the place. I use this predominantly most of the time, but yeah, I'm using all kinds of shit, you know? Yeah. It wasn't sponsorship. It was helping friends. And that's how I think with, with like stencil stuff and everything else. I think it was more about friendship than it was about proper sponsorships. Now it's just, I don't care who makes it. If you're giving it to me for free, I'll put I'm it sponsored. Exactly. I'll put the patch on my jacket. Boom, I'm good. <laughs> exactly. That's that's exactly what it turned into. And somehow people hate each other over it. Where I feel like now it's getting a little bit better as far as people like not loving other products. But when it was like, when the Eternal and Fusion Fusion Oh, dude, happen, when, you, when you go to certain shows, crazy. oh, no, yeah. Fusion can't be there, Eternal's here. Oh, Fusion, <laughs> Eternal can't be here because Fusion. And, like, here. if you have Fusion on your banner, you got to move. Or if you have Eternal, it's like, that shit was really intense. And, like, people stupid. were fucking well, but, mad. But the funny thing is, is you've got all these fucking, these promote, these uh, 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 convention promoters, and they're taking big money. So when Eternal Fuck comes man. in and says, I'm giving you fucking, I don't know. Like, for the biggest the banner. Yeah. The, all the I don't know the numbers. But if I'm giving you X amount of dollars, I don't want to see Fusion. I don't want to see yeah. Intense. I don't want to see this. Yeah, they'll buy out an entire convention yeah. to only be the exclusive income. Which sucks because I know people go to conventions just to pick up gear. And for they're sure. like, fuck, they only have Eternal. They only uh, have Fusion. They only uh, have this. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, man, it really got, it's fucking intense out But there. again, that's when things, like, you know, people say this isn't an industry. Yeah, unfortunately, it's become one. And I hate using that word. I mean, it slips out every now and again. Yeah, I tend yeah. to use trade. A lot of people using the word craft. And I, I like both of those, you know. Um, but it's, it's, but it's hard industry. to not call it an industry <laughs> yeah. when you've got, you know, Fortune 500 companies taking a major interest in us. Yeah. You, when you've got Fortune 500 companies taking major interest in, in, in laser removal. Like, you dealt with the re- removal place. Oh, yeah. Did they get put? Did they? Oh, so... So the remover is the one that's bought everybody out. Everybody. Yeah, yeah, the bullshit they're pulling now is fucking, it's a load, dude. Like, I know guys that had been getting lasered by them for a decade. They go there now, and something that they know for a fact would have taken three sessions is now taking ten. And it's costly. Really? Oh, yeah. Dude, I've so that, I mean, them. that was probably the plan all along. I love the people that work for the remover. I don't know the owners of it, but. Well, that's the same thing. I sent a friend there, and he was getting his top of his hand removed. Three sessions in, I'm like, don't go back to them. This is bullshit. This is just nothing? Yeah, this, they haven't done a goddamn thing. That's and so if anybody out there works there, you're working for crooks. I don't give a fuck. It's bullshit. <laughs> it's absolute bullshit. Fuck them. Well, it's not even a matter of fuck them. It's because the fact of the matter is, half the shit we're dealing with, and I'm hoping to have a conversation with Mario and uh, Mario uh, Barth and, and mm. Damien uh, about all this stuff, because I think a lot of the shit that we're dealing with right now with what's happening in Pigment directly oh. relates back to the medical profession. Uh, yeah. I and I the same thing. 
I know. Uh, yeah, exactly for sure. And about. like, uh, yeah, that that Pinkman conversation and what they're going to ban or what they're not going to ban. Wait. I cannot wait to have this conversation. I was supposed That's to have good. it two weeks ago, and we just haven't been able to get all three of them. Because originally it was just going to be me and and, uh, and Damien. Um, and then uh, last minute he called me up and he's like, hey, I talked to Mario. He wants in on this. And I'm like, okay, cool. I was like, but now we got to get three people together. And I'm, I'm going to go down there to do it because I'd rather, I'd rather, because they're not going to come up here. So, yeah. You know, yeah. so. And I appreciate you coming down here because it's not an easy thing. Oh no, that's fun. Um, all right, so let's let's pull away from uh, uh, tattoo a little bit. And uh, what other mediums you work in? I mean, you find yourself uh, predominantly digital. Are you doing color pencil? Do you do any paint work? Like, what are you doing outside of tattooing? And I, I know a lot of your stuff seems to to lean heavy towards tattooing, mm -hmm. even outside of the, you know with different mediums. But what are you using? Uh, I mean, I definitely do a lot of digital stuff, especially because of how convenient it is. And I still travel a lot. Like, my girlfriend lives in Detroit. We've been long distance for almost five years. So oh, like, shit. Okay. So, like, I'm back and forth to there, like, every other month, if not more. So, like, drawing in airports and making prints like that is just easier. But I, like, every now and then, if I get a wild hair up my ass, I love using colored pencils. Right. Whether it's, like, sketching or doing final things. But I used to watercolor all the time. Oh, for real? Um, yeah. And like I, I don't think I've ever seen any, any real watercolor from Really? Me. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was, like, my main thing. I did a way. And, like, I was part of this fucking rock star contest. So, like, my watercolor is on a can. That oh, shit. St still sold in Canada. Nice. So, <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, I used to watercolor all the time. But it was it's still, like, special effect -y, You know? So, it's, like, that Neo Trad, but, like, still has dimension to it. Right. But then I ended up just getting so fucking frustrated. Because painting is annoying as fuck. Yeah. It is no there's no there's no there's no wiggle room there's no, there's there's no, no two finger yeah. tap and like I have yeah exactly yeah, so. but I uh, there's an, an artist at our shop Roxanne who like she is really big and in, in just starting to watercolor again so I'm like you know maybe I'll like dabble back in but man colored pencils and digital are just so much more fun for me yeah like I love the looseness of it you know and like this colored pencils like when I first started tattooing like colored pencil on Bristol was one of my that was like that's what everybody did if you because I got in at that time where I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't taught to use watercolor and spit shading and everything else. I was colored pencil because I was an artist outside. Yeah. I worked with another guy. He's like, oh, have you ever worked with colored pencils? And I'm like, no. And we just started fucking around together. And that became my medium for a long time mixed with airbrush. And then even with the airbrush, I always fall back on colored pencil because it's just that, that tactile feel. Yeah. There's like, there's so, it's so tangible. It's, it's so yeah. just like. Like you could feel the grit and everything. Exactly. And like, like I always just did it on like tone gray paper. Where like I always I, love doing stuff with like color erase pencils, like the reds or the blues, or the, and then just going back in with like a white. Or yeah, yeah. Just to give you that little highlight. Yeah, yeah. it's so like it's so satisfying. And I think it was actually like Tanane who was just like, dude, have you ever put colored pencil on like tone paper? I'm like, what are you talking about? And I was like, this is the shit. You yeah. can use white. Yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah, so exactly. Because like, like with with like watercolor and everything, you know, I would just be doing it on regular like arches watercolor paper. Exactly. And like then it's like you have to leave that highlight negative, you know. So it's like with colored pencils, I'm like, I can fucking do that. And you can just yeah, and you can and you fucking can, bury it in there. <laughs> yeah, you can, and then you can work, make it count. Or going back in now with these all these crazy pens like gel pens and stuff. Yeah, yeah like you can white do highlights. like mixed media everything. And like I did that with watercolor where I'd have like an acrylic marker sometimes or like right. and just like kind of do my white highlights with that if I really needed something to be that's your crazy. Effect, then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, my, my Sean Herman tool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so that's predominantly was that. Did you ever like foots around with like oils or spray paint or I never uh, spray paint only a little bit when I lived in Nashville. I literally did one thing because I worked with two amazing graffiti artists, right. Rago and uh, Marty McEwen, Riot. Right. And like they were, they're so fucking good. So I did like a little skull and I wanted to put a water droplet on it. It took me like an hour and a half to just do a water droplet after I did the skull. And I'm like, I don't, I don't have time for this. I want to learn. Like I, I think it'd be really fun, but I don't understand the scale. How the fuck does like Smug One do a giant face on a thirty-story building? How the fuck are you doing that, dude? I'll be honest with you. Like when you look at the street art that's going on nowadays, you you just you can't help but just be like, these are like the illustrate. Because I mean, the fact that you can take something like that, put it on the side of a fucking building, when most places are just making giant banners up digitally. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But to be able to take your art from a fucking black book this big and then projected onto a wall how is it, it a just, projector is that like what i don't know i'm so i, I, I know, like scaffolding and fucking, i know there is one there is one crazy. there is one project down in hartford that is done projected because they there's a building across i think it's across 84 
and they projected from the uh, from the, uh, the parking garage across the street. But a lot of them, I, I, you know, I'm not even going to pretend to know. I think it's a grid <laughs> system. I don't know. Uh, I have no idea. This is like, fucking it's, amazing. That, that's bonkers to me. So that's one of those things where it's like the same as I felt about seeing a Nico realism piece in a magazine where I'm like, yeah, I could learn how to spray paint, but what the fuck is that? Yeah, like, exactly. I'm not doing that. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> this is amazing. It's like, yeah, like, it's someone's like, already doing it. Yeah, okay. what am I going to do? A fucking Mickey Mouse and just be like, yeah, look, I'm great. Nice. <laughs> um, do you do you offer prints and stuff like that? Is most of that stuff digitally now? Or? Uh, they're, they're still both. Like, I, I, my prints are... I still have a lot of colored pencil prints. I still have a lot of digital ones. Nice. Um, but I mean, like I said, I, I definitely, I plan on painting again, watercolor stuff, but when the fuck do you have time for this stuff? Yeah. You know, it's well, like I mean, now, I mean, you said before, I know me personally, I have nothing but time because of how slow things have been. Um, but again, this has been taking up a bit of time because uh, again, I'm a moron with this stuff. It's, I'm still trying to figure stuff out. I'm sure there's going to be complaints about the sound or whatever on this. But, um, <laughs> too, too but, yeah, but again, it's one of those things. It's like I don't, I don't do this. This isn't my my chosen medium. You know what I mean? But yeah, uh, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to find the time, energy, and even inspiration to kind of do stuff. You know? Yeah, and like I still, I still am like busy enough where like I'm drawing for my clients 99 percent of the time. Almost the time. The only time I have free time to really draw from me is when I'm in Detroit. And like my girlfriend's and cut working. off from everything. Exactly. It's like, it's like when I take a week off, it's like I'll get my appointments done, and then it's like, oh, now you can draw for fun. And like, and I, I, I wish I had that more, but I also wish I had more money <laughs> because it's like I love having that time, but it, like being forced when it's like, okay, I don't have the option of tattooing right now. I am just gonna sit at this kitchen table while she's working. And like I am gonna draw, I could potentially make a print or just like get some ideas. I don't want to fuck around. Yeah, yeah and it's it is fun to like real love, like love drawing again. You know, because when you're only working for clients all the time, you kind of forget why you like it. Right. So even like during COVID, it was like after a couple of weeks, it's like I actually feel like drawing. I haven't felt like that in a long time. It's always it's been a job for such a long time. Where it's yeah. like you know what, I kind of want to just draw a picture right now. Nice. And like, so when I'm up there, I kind of get that same feeling of like why I actually fell in love with this in the first place. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. What kind of hobbies do you have outside of tattooing? Do you have any? Or Yeah, I, I ride bikes. I play drums. I pet kitties. Um, <laughs> play drums, pet kitties, and ride bikes. Yeah. 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 Mostly drums right now. Like I, I play a lot of drums. Band and stuff or just like fun? Nah, just for me. I have an electric kit and I just wear headphones and just play along to all my favorite bands. So I feel like I'm in the band. Yeah, <laughs> are you ever in a band or no? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was in a few bands, and uh, but like, I just don't have time for that shit. And dealing with fucking five guys, smelly as fuck in a van, doing going on tour, no, I don't need that shit anymore. anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm good. Like I can go on tour tattooing like with a friend or by myself, and like fly places, and you don't have to just be stuck sleeping somewhere in a random Walmart parking lot. Exactly. You've done that as a tattoo, or why do it as a band? Yeah, don't need to. <laughs> like I'm good, but yeah, I, I still I love playing drums. That's definitely my outlet for everything. And that's something you do pretty much every day, or is like not every like day, an, like definitely like a few times a week. Like a full on unplug thing, like you're not thinking of anything but that. Yeah, exactly. It's it's definitely like the outlet where it's a few times a week. And like if I don't have to draw or if I finish my drawing early, it's like all right, I'm going to the basement. And one of my cats, little tiny Rake, he's my cheerleader. He just sits right next to me and just fucking jams out the whole time. Nice. It's just really adorable. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah. How important is it to you, like, to really have that kind of like secondary outlet? To... Oh, I think everybody needs it. Yeah. Like especially like, I mean, I lost two cats last month, and like telling me about having, it. Yeah, yeah, having that fucking outlet of like being able to just beat the shit out of some drums or like just crank music even if it's just cranking music and headphones like yeah. having that I feel like is so necessary so totally. like, I, I think everybody needs something, like, something what do you, what do, you do? Uh, I used to I used to uh, I used to read a lot um, I'm, I'm bad I'm I get I get kind of caught up in a, in a way of thinking it was usually art in some way shape or form most of the drawings I do now is all for flash or some kind of tattoo inspired thing it's very rarely that i do anything for myself and the older i'm getting the, the harder i find doing that you know really? what i mean um more of it's this honestly i like hanging out with my friends i like shooting the shit i just like my idea of unplugging is to not think i mean i'm still talking tattoos i'm still doing all that mm -hmm. but i i do enjoy this so it's like that's probably my thing as as pathetic as that is it's it i don't is think it's thing. pathetic it's, it it's, it's still an outlet of just like all right i'm not tattooing we're not drawing yeah, we're exactly. just talking and fucking yeah. off. it's more about spending time with friends like if yeah. i travel like i'm getting ready to go down to down south next week i'm going down to uh, virginia beach and to oh, cool. go people we'll be down there mainly tattooable shit but it's all people that i admire and really want to hang with you know yeah. not so much tattoo wise more just shoot just talking shit 
Yeah. Well, you and know? like, yeah. Do you find, because I know when I'm at a convention, like, and I see all my friends and everything, like, we don't talk about tattoos at all. I can't help. I can't say I do that. Really? Like, most of the time, it's just me bitching completely about <laughs> tattooing. <laughs> to the point where, like, I, like, we were at a convention, when I did the Brooklyn convention, the first one, two years ago. I, the last day of the convention, Teresa's like, oh, we're going to go out to dinner and blah, blah, blah. I'm like... I'm going to go by myself because if I go out with you guys, it's just going to be me ripping on the entire weekend <laughs> and nobody needs to hear that anymore. Oh, so God, I literally I just sat at the bar. I had to talk to the bartender, had a couple of whiskeys, great fucking meal and just crashed. And okay. then the next day I drove home and I was fine. Well, those convention crazy. dinners are a fucking nightmare when there's like, it's like, oh, the there's festivals. Austin's 75 people are exactly. going to get a table at this place. Like, dude, fuck that. I'm dude, just going to order some like, DoorDash. Jimmy Lit walked to the guy. Well, the guy was just like, we got into this thing where every time we go away, the group get bigger, 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 bigger. And then before I know it's a fucking nightmare. Yeah. And then there was a time, there was like this, this sweet spot where we'd be like, okay, you invite one fucking person. That's it. Yep. I invite one person. You invite one person. They can bring one person. We're done. Yeah. And we did that for a couple of years. And then all of a sudden it got crazy again. We go to wherever and he'd just be like, oh yeah, we're going to meet such and such, such and such, such and such. Before you no. know it, at eight o'clock then it turns into a 10 o'clock then. And I'm like, fuck yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. You like know, that's so. now when I'm at a show, it's, I usually do shows with Lindsay Baker, who you know, yeah. obviously. And it'll just be like, I'll just get the fuck out of here and uh, like just go. Like, yeah, and just duck out. Yeah, yeah. Just like, just like you slowly grab your shit and yeah. just like, no, we'll be right back. And it's like, we never see that. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> yeah, dude. We ended up dropping our stuff off in the room and yeah. we just got a couple of bags of potato chips and crashed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, I, I can't do those huge dinners anymore. I, I, I don't want to be up till fucking one in the morning so like, by no, with, with everybody. Well, dinner. that's the worst part is I do enjoy that. Like, I would rather, like, the, we did Hell City and the same thing happened. We all went out. Everything is shut down in the city. And it was a fucking nightmare. I just left everybody. It was like 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. I'm like, I'm going back to the hotel. But I left them. They got they went and got pizza someplace else. I went back to the hotel and we were up till fucking four in the fucking morning. Well, shit, shit. I don't mind if it's small group up to like four or five. Like if sitting at like a hotel bar with oh, like but three or four people. Fine I'm saying right. like or like yeah, when you're at that table with yeah. fucking sixty people. No, because you're not. And you're just it. sitting there like and you're like you're just trying to hear everybody else's conversation yeah. or you're locked, locked in. Or like, you're at an end of the table where uh, all your friends are at the other uh, end. Of the uh, table. Yeah, where I'm just like that's just. I think like, I'd much rather like let's go like we'll go find a fucking burger or a slice of pizza and then we'll all meet back at the hotel exactly. bar because that's like, that's me, the most that's, fun part. That's the most that's the best for me when it comes to overall just uh, uh, socializing amongst yeah. your peers. You know what I mean? For I mean sure. You can talk business, you can talk personal, you can talk whatever. Yeah. And, it, and to me, that's what that's what makes conventions worth it. If that doesn't exist, and it doesn't exist in, in like the London convention or like the Paris convention. They all break up into clicks because there's not one place everybody's going to. They're all over the city. That's how Philly was too. Where, where I hated sucks. it. Where it's like I love it when it's like this is where the after party is. Did you like, do, did like, you ever do the early Philly conventions? Oh when yeah. When it, yep. How much better were those shows? It's so much better. Like, you know? Before it was just a warehouse fucking flea market. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> which I think no, no offense Philly. No but, fuck Philly. <laughs> so, no offense Troy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whatever. No, I mean, hey, fucking spill your shit, man. Oh, no, yeah, I've already made it. I've already, anybody who knows me knows my feelings on Philly and Troy, so I don't really No, I, I, I remember, like, the escalators would always break, and, like, I, I love that Philly show. I love a closer-knit show. Yeah. Where I, it's, like, there's just one common, like, hotel bar. There's one after-party place. It's, like, yeah, go get a piece of pizza, meet back at the bar. Like, I just like to be able, I guess what I'm saying I, I, what I don't like about those big dinners is, like, I like to be able to stand up and walk around and, like, go mingle with everybody. Yes. When you're at a dinner, you're just fucking stuck for four yeah. hours because there's 800 people. Even Detroit. Like, even Detroit to this day. I mean, the, the, it's at the convention center across the street, but everybody stays in the hotel across the, uh, right across from there. Yeah. That bar is fucking huge. And, every, and I haven't done that in quite a few years, but I think I did the 19th year of the show. And, dude, everybody hung out. And it was yeah. just a nice, it's a cool environment. I love, I love the Detroit show. Yeah. It's definitely one of my favorites. Because, right? like... Everybody meets back in that hotel bar. Exactly. Everybody fucking does. And then when they try to kick you out, here comes Bob Tyrell with a fucking backpack full of whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> just, not anymore. No, I was just going to say, he's yeah, sober now. He's yeah, yeah. for a few months now. Yeah, so. I think like over six. Yeah, it's probably at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Like, good for Bob. Yeah, no, definitely good for him. Definitely good for him. So, well, let me ask you a question. Do you have any shout outs? Because we're getting towards the end. Like, is there anything you want to definitely touch on or any shout outs you want to give? Like, people you work with, anybody, new artists that you know? That- Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> no i mean obviously just check out night owl tattoo and like i mean 
I don't know. I feel like I'd be playing favorites if I shouted out everybody. But That's good I point. did forget to mention Scotty Munster. He was a huge influence as well. Oh, fuck it. And Scotty's a super nice guy, dude. And, oh, yeah. And, like, Kelly, where, like, she actually thought I was Paul Acker when she first met me. That's <laughs> funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a funny if you want to do a quick last story yeah so that's Kelly, yeah. Kelly, Kelly when that's she, a good way to end it when Kelly applied to work at Off the Map in East Hampton I was guest spotting there at the time and she went to Gabe showed him like we saw her work and everything so she left and I was like Gabe you have to hire her she's gonna be fucking awesome her work's incredible already like she is really funny and all that shit so she ended up getting the job but for like the next few years she thought I was Paul Acker so when we first met, I was like, yeah, I actually met you when you interviewed for Off the Map. She's like, that was you? I was like, yeah. Was like, I thought that was Paul. I'm like, nope. Oh, that was that's me. amazing. So, <laughs> yep. So that's that's the Kelly Doty story. Dottie? Doty? Do we even know? I, you know, I, I say Doty, and she, I it think is, I got is, her to slip. It is fucking Doty. Yeah, I think I got her to slip, and she pretty much admitted it was Doty. It so, is Doty. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I've known her for a long time. Yeah, and Kelly's <laughs> wonderful. So. But yeah, so, hey, as Paul Acker, it's been really nice. As Paul Acker, it's been really good. No, <laughs> All right, well, on that note, we'll call it. Um, I want to thank everybody for, again, and I want to thank you for coming down here. Oh, right? My I really pleasure, man. Thank um, you. Please like and subscribe, spread the word, uh, let everybody know about this, and uh, see you when I see you. Bye, everybody.